is Suika Beiji, and in today's video, I am going to be showing you how I am making the dress that is in front of you on the screen right now. It was an amazing process to make this dress, obviously, I've already made it. I'm so sorry that this video took so long to get out. Um, I actually went on like a sort of mini vacation, that's where I ended up taking this photo that's on screen and the photo that you're going to end up seeing at the end but this video is basically just going to be the process of how i made this victorian sort of gown that kit is wearing and you guys said that you wanted to see more sewing videos and so you ask and i give i just really wanted to film the process of how i normally do my sewing and especially with this dress because it definitely is more of an intricate piece it's definitely not a tutorial. I do not 100% know what I'm doing in this video So you can definitely take inspiration from this if you are going to try to recreate this dress If you have any questions, make sure to ask me in the comments or email me DM me whatever you want to do I'll mention more about that at the end of the video, but just enjoy the process. I hope that you guys like the video and yeah Alrighty, so my first step is always to iron my fabric, so I'm going to be grabbing my ironing board. That is the worst sound. Also, I just thought that I should note that you should not be following any of my examples that I do while I'm ironing. I also previewed the fabric right there. That is one of the fabrics I'm going to be using for this dress. I already ironed the other one. Again, another example of why you should not follow me and my ironing skills. Please do not touch the iron. That's kind of just how I check if it's like hot or not. Also, I suggest that it, whenever you are ironing fabric, you don't iron on the pattern side just in case your iron is dirty, but I wash my iron after every time that I use it, so normally it's quite fine. I wonder if I could iron two fabrics at once. And the answer is no. You probably should not be ironing two fabrics at once. But again, please don't follow my example. Also, please do not iron while watching your phone. And then after completing that step, I have my awkward walk back upstairs. So now that I'm back in my doll room, I've just laid my fabric out on the floor, all nice and clean, and I'm going to show you guys the like inspiration for this dress. So this is something that I drew up a while ago. I actually already made this dress, but the idea for this dress is that I'm only going to have one ruffle ruffles at the bottom with an exposed edge, and I'm going to be doing a different neckline instead, but there's still going to be an overskirt, which is what this material is going to be. So basically, I'm going to take inspiration from this pattern that I already made but it's not going to be exactly the same because obviously I don't want to remake a dress that I already made but I'm going to be keeping some aspects of it and taking out others as well so now I'm just going to be grabbing my materials that I need to be cutting these I'm going to start with the skirt for some reason whenever I make a dress I always start with the skirt but I have a specific kind of scissors which you'll see and my patterns so here is my pattern. It is my skirt pattern. Now you will see how lazy I am. Also, I use shearing scissors for most everything that I do. It really just helps the edges not fray, especially whenever I'm selling my clothing items. And here is my skirt pattern. As you can see, it is not quite long enough, but I know that um, the skirt has to be 10 inches anyways. And I am too lazy to actually cut myself a new skirt pattern because if you didn't know, I make all my patterns and come up with all my own designs. And so I have just been sticking with this one now. I'll probably eventually remake my short skirt pattern and my long skirt pattern. But as you can see, I'm just going to take my measuring tape, I'm going to measure it out, and then I'm going to be cutting the fabric to the length. So instead of going exactly to the pattern, I also just cut it out in more of a boxy formation because it is the overskirt. But as you can see, there is that little lip on the end of the pattern, which is where the Velcro is supposed to go. But I want the Velcro to be attached to one separate piece, which you'll see later. I'll explain it more in depth. I want it to be attached to only one of the skirts, sorry. 
And this is the skirt that I'm going to be attaching it to. This is the bottom piece that I'm going to be hemming on both sides so that I can then pleat it and then attach it to the top skirt and then I'm going to be pleating that as well. And so because I do not want two layers of fabric for my velcro to go on because it's just very inconvenient and not the highest quality and everything that I make I really want to be you know as best as I can make it obviously and so I'm only going to be attaching a little extra piece which I'm going to be cutting out of this fabric onto here and it's just a square the same size as what is on my skirt pattern that I'm going to be measuring so as you can see here, I'm going to take my measuring tape again, I'm going to measure how large that rectangle is, and then I'm going to be cutting it out so that I can later on attach it to the white skirt piece. I promise this will all make so much more sense. So here it is, really simple, no big deal, you don't need a pattern or anything. But here is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be putting good side to good side and then flipping it over eventually and that is the velcro piece and then you just sew up the rest of the skirt. It's basically like a normal skirt pattern except I don't want the extra bunching of the fabric. Now it is finally machine time. I have my white thread in first because I'm going to be doing the underskirt. I also keep this light by machine. my machine. I thought I'd just give you a little tour. And here is the original dress from the pattern that I had previously made. I think that it turned out really cute. I'm really in love with this dress. So the photo that I showed you at the beginning, this is the dress. We're going to ignore the one next to it, but that is what the inspiration is really all about. And now I'm probably probably going to get to sewing and I'll show you guys the time lapse. So here I'm now just going to be hemming both pieces of the fabric. This is going to be an exposed edge with the pleats on the top and so I'm going to be having to hem both sides just so that there are no frays and it all looks really nice and neat. My thread also breaks here for a moment so I had to re-thread the top of my machine which was kind of annoying but you know what? It all happens, it's all good and it ends up getting fixed anyways. And for the top of the skirt I only had to hem one side because I wanted to hem the other part. And so here is the skirt whenever it is all together. I know that was a bit of a jump but I kind of thought that I explained it pretty well. You also put the good side to good side like I said and you can see what I meant by there and you can see the multiple pleats on the bottom and then I also pleated the top along with it. Please make sure if you are going to try to take on a project like this you sew the bottom pleated to the flat skirt first and then you hem the top or else it is going to look very very bad. But now I'm going to be sewing on the overskirt and I'll explain that. So for the overskirt, it is just a smaller piece of fabric. And so I'm going to be hemming the bottom of it and then the sides of it as well because it is going to come around the front and have a really pretty exposed edge that overlays your underskirt. And I'm really in love with this material. The more I stare at it, the more like Renaissance-esque it gets. And so here you can just see, I'm just hemming the ed edges, nothing really special. And then I'm going to be showing another clip of how I lay it all out. Here is the finished skirt yet again, and I think that it actually turned out really nice. And then here is the overskirt after I've hemmed the three edges and then done the pleats as well. And so I'm going to be showing you guys how I line up the velcro in the back because my overskirt is not two pieces because I think that it looks prettier as just one continuous piece. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fold the underskirt how it would lay on a doll, and then I'm going to be laying out evenly the overskirt on top of that. So as you can see, it is centered, and then whenever I see the middle of it, I'm going to make sure to like mark that with my finger a bit and make sure that I have the right place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking some scissors and I'm going to be cutting the same length as the Velcro strip that I've already attached here. I'll zoom in for you guys a little bit. I'm going to be cutting the exact same length as the Velcro strip that I had cut out earlier so that it can line up with the slit in the back of the skirt. I really hope that that makes sense, but 
Then afterwards, I'm just going to end up hemming it. And as you can see, whenever the back is sewn up, it is going to be sewn against that part yet again, good side to good side, so that it can be flipped inside out later. I'm just really trying to make sure that I have that all nice and perfect because this step is really important to be very precise about because if you don't have this, your whole skirt can get up like unaligned. And that is really not, you know, the look that we're going for. So that is basically it and now I'm just going to be sewing the underskirt to the overskirt and then the skirt should be all complete after I hem this and get that attached. Now here is the final skirt and we are officially at the halfway point. I think that it turned out really nice. I really love how much volume that it has to it and I love the overskirt. It can be such a pain to make sometimes but you'll see as you get more experience if you are a sewer like myself that it comes with practice and that you can eventually do it with ease. It took me so long to figure out how to even do that so I'm proud that I'm even at this point. Next, I'm going to be making the top of the dress, which is the final part. We are officially halfway through. The top always seems to take less time for me than the skirt. I don't know why. The skirt for this dress was also a bit elaborate. And so what I'm going to do, how I do my top pattern, is I only have one top pattern and it is only half. And so after I cut out the top, I just use the pieces of fabric that I've already, already cut out and it's very efficient. While I'm down here, I'm also going to be cutting out the sleeves. I again only have one sleeve pattern because I only wanted to make one because then it can be versatile to all. So as you can see the folds, I just fold it to the length and the size that I want and then I cut it out how it is and I take the pattern off because it's easier to cut around the fabric than it is the paper yet again. And then I get to my machine and I've already hemmed the sides previously. I've hemmed the neckline and I actually went with a square shape so that I could take this really beautiful lace and sew it on the back. So basically I'm just going to be measuring the length of that. I'll just end up eyeballing it probably. And then I'm going to be sewing it on to this side of the hem so that the original hem is sticking over the lace and it's kind of in the back. Ground. After that, I'll also sew good side to good side and be attaching the sleeves as you will be seeing shortly. So I actually now have the full top sewn, except for the back with the Velcro included as well, which I'll show you guys how I do, but I am so excited to be putting this together. I think it turned out pretty well, and now this is really the moment of truth, is adding it to the skirt. And so basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning it, again, good side to good side. I'm going to be saying that a lot. You'll learn that's a big rule in sewing, and then I'm going to be trimming off off the extra edges after I hem the back. Okay, so I'm officially finished with the dress. You guys have a photo of it up on screen right now. I am kind of in love with it. I think that it turned out really nice for my first time doing a skirt like this. This is exactly why I'm saying this is not exactly a tutorial video, more like a sew along with me, if you get my point. And I am actually really in love with the neckline as well. This is one of my mother's favorite necklines. She loves whenever I do the square and then add lace to it i think the lace also really pulls it together if you notice i also added lace onto the sleeves as well because again it just adds consistency i love the skirt i can't get over that i'll say it a million times i think my one of my next dresses i'm probably going to be doing the same skirt just not adding the overskirt on top because i don't know if it might have taken away from the really lovely pleats at the bottom but I still think that it turned out like stunning. So let me know what you guys think as well. I really want to know how you guys like the dress down in the comments below. You guys are actually seeing a photo that I have not yet taken. So let me know how the photo is because I plan on going like sort of like camping 
tomorrow actually is whenever we leave and I'm taking my dolls with me for doing like a sort of photo shoot thing. I might vlog it, I might not. Let me know if you'd like to see a vlog for that as well. But um, yeah, just let me know how it is, if you like it or not. I'm pretty happy with it. If you want to see some of the other dresses that I've made very similar to this, like you might have just seen like the pink one and such, which I'm going to be taking more photos of, make sure to check me out on Instagram at sweetcupag in all lowercase. Also, if you want more sewing videos, please let me know. This is my first time doing a sewing video, so I apologize if it's a little out of sorts. I'm hopefully going to be getting used to it over time because you guys said that you'd like to see more of this kind of content. And if you're interested in purchasing anything that I've sewn, shop So Sweet Doll Studio on Etsy. The link is down in the description. And make sure that please, 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 if you have any questions or if you would like any anything else explained to you, my DMs on Instagram are always open and you can also email me at sweetcupag3 at gmail.com. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I love to answer your sewing questions, just any other questions, and if you'd just like to chat, I'm right here. <laughs> so that is about all. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to, I guess. And I will see you guys next time. Make sure that you stay safe, happy, and healthy. Bye!